and welcome everyone to me and Willie's talk inside Figma, the art of being flexible. And maybe you are able to infer this from my title when you are looking at in the schedule, but we will be talking about our favorite feature that we announced today, Auto Layout V3. And so here's a quick overview of what we'll cover. We'll start with a short history of nearly everything Auto Layout. We'll talk about how we scoped V3, share some of the design challenges we ran into along the way, and end with some parting thoughts. It's a long and flexing road, so contain your excitement. And now I'll give it to Willie. Thanks, Emily. So getting right into it, auto layout is a way to make responsive layouts and UI really quickly and easily right inside Figma. And if you're a web developer, you might be thinking, hey, isn't this kind of similar to Flexbox? And you'd be right. For those of you who don't know, Flexbox is a standard for making responsive UI and layouts on the web. It's very powerful and customizable. And auto layout, as part of Figma, we actually had another goal in mind. We wanted auto layout to be accessible too, even to people who have not used Flexbox before, which sort of led us to coin this term. We're very inspired by Flexbox. Um, and the term was, we want auto layout to be a thoughtful subset of Flexbox. And this is coined by Marchin, design manager who worked on this, as well as show director of product. And on screen, I've shown here's a, just a quick diagram from a complete guide to Flexbox from CSSTricks.com. It's a great article, very visual, helps you learn Flexbox. It's probably how I learned Flexbox as well. Uh, we wanted to take the most essential features of Flexbox, the ones that were easy to understand, and unlock the most use cases and bring those to auto layout. And that's what we did when we launched Auto Layout back in December of last year. We focused on a concept called Hug Contents, where if you add Auto Layout to a frame, it'll automatically resize to fit whatever is inside. So for example, here's a button with text that you can edit. And when you make the text longer, the frame will also grow. It's also great for making lists and feeds, where if you add items, the whole container will automatically get bigger. Here's an example of a card layout. In Auto Layout V1, we also introduced child alignment, where different items inside an auto layout could be aligned to the left, the center, or the right. And we also had another feature in mind, which was what a lot of people are asking for. For example, if you're designing a phone layout and you start with a fixed width, maybe you would want the items inside to stretch or fill to grow to fit the entire width. And in this example, it'd be great for the image and the text to span the entire width from left to right. And so we worked on this pretty hard. And in February, earlier this year during config, we shipped what we call stretch in the counter axis. Now, what's the counter axis? For this feed, or sorry, for this card, which is a vertical auto layout frame, the main or primary axis is vertical. The other axis we call the counter axis. And that's the axis we enable stretch in, in this case, horizontally. Um, and along with that, we introduced a new button in the, in the properties panel that's highlighted in pink right here. And it may seem like we've just added one more button, but we call it V2 internally because it's actually a giant technical challenge that we had to overcome. Figma was originally not really designed for dynamic layouts, so we had to change a lot of what's under the hood to make this possible, and I'm really proud of that. And now I'll turn it over to Emily to talk about what happened after we launched in config. Thanks, Willie. And so I'm going to now talk about how we decided what to build for V3. And that story starts from right when you last heard from us, which is the config in February 2020. And so we had just shipped Stretch. Users are happy. We're happy. And it was actually around this time that me and Rasmus joined the auto layout team. And it was a perfect time because there was so much hype that made us so excited to ramp up. Uh, Rasmus is luckily a longtime Figma designer and is also a Flexbox Pro, so was able to jump right in and start contributing. Um, FYI, this was actually the same week that I had joined Figma, and I came from a consumer tech background, was mostly thinking about how to optimize funnels, was like, what's the Flexbox, and was mostly trying to get my bearings. But with this team, we set off to decide what's next. And our first move was to look at user feedback. And one thing stood out among the rest, which is the other stretch. And at the top, we have an example, which is 
Should it be possible to nest a horizontal auto layout frame inside of a vertical auto layout frame, then have the horizontal auto layout frame grow when you resize the vertical one? And yes, this is what a lot of our feedback looks like. And honestly, like no matter how many times I read this, it didn't really make sense to me, it gave me a bit of a headache. I kind of knew that our stretch wasn't stretchy enough, but what does that mean? And what really helped me was digging into a couple of real life examples for why this is frustrating. And so here's one. Let's say you're building a chat app for cats. Let's call it cat chat. On the left is a message component, which is a horizontal auto layout with two children. The main axis for this is the horizontal axis since it's a horizontal auto layout. In isolation, this works. As you type more in the message, you want the text to grow vertically. But when you put this into a full design, like in the right, we quickly realized the example where you need the horizontal auto layouts to also stretch because the parent vertical auto layout can also stretch. And so we recognize that this is frustrating and we set out and propose a fast follow design. That fast follow design looked a little bit like this and our original intention was to you know, launch it a couple of months after and I'll talk about it a little bit. For V2, we added a new alignment button in the top right area for stretch. And we thought the quickest and simplest thing we could do is to add similar buttons in that area. So in the top right, you can see there's more alignment options for stretch in the main axis. The bottom left, you can see there's a new hug option in the main axis. And we took this proposal to design crit. It's pretty early. That's a screenshot of the Google Calendar invite that we took this uh, crit, uh, design to crit for. And you'll hear more from Noah and our design team in our next Inside Figma session about design crits. But a quick preview, we have crits two to three times a week at Figma, and it's an amazing opportunity for designers and teams to get feedback. And we went into this feeling good. We were expecting to get mostly positive feedback and that our colleagues would be excited for us to launch this new functionality to users. And as it goes with design crits, we got a lot of feedback. And the feedback was helpful. And in general, it called out hesitation around how auto layout v2 can already be intimidating. There's already a lot of icons with, without context. And so we realized we had a blind spot since our team was looking so deeply into v1 and v2 that you know just another icon we thought wouldn't make too much of a difference. At the same time, we had heard this feedback and thought you know maybe it was still worth it to take on some design debt and to take on this added complexity because users really wanted it. In parallel, we continued to keep an eye on user feedback. And more and more feedback was rolling in. And what we found is that even though right after config, the main feedback we had received then was around main access stretch, in the month post config, all different types of requests came in at a similar, if not more, higher frequency than main access stretch. And these are things you might be familiar with, which is more flexbox requests, things like individual padding and spacing, min max width, and more. And so our team looked at this and we were beginning to have second thoughts on our plan to fast follow. Our designs added complexity and it seemed like it might not even do everything that users want. And then in early March, the final push happened. Sawyer, who's an engineer on the prototyping team, decided one weekend to build Flexbox into auto layout while binging Love is Blind, as you do on weekends nowadays. Uh, and when he shared the prototype with us, Sawyer not only impressed his partner, but us. And there's honestly something amazing about seeing a prototype come to life. At this point, we had a lot of static designs and tables and like paragraphs of proposals, but seeing it in real life made it feel so good. And that good feeling combined with the internal and external feedback we got made us decide to change our minds. And so, we ended up deciding to propose a proper V3 instead of a fast follow. And what you see here is an actual screenshot from a product review that we had for auto layout V3 back in early April. And in this, you can see that we're, we proposed the folder V3 with additional functionality, specifically main axis stretch, individual padding, and space between. We chose these because of the frequency of how we heard these requests, as well as how frustrating existing workbacks were, fallbacks were. And we felt good and confident about this because we believed it would be a more satisfying update. And even more importantly, it would give us the time to do a redesign to make it future-proof for the inevitable V4 and V5 features that we wanted to launch. And maybe we were running out of room for icons. 
Um, I know it's been a long time since April and a lot of things have happened like COVID and Willie took a side job as a producer for the Figma musical. Check it out if you haven't. Um, but at the same time, we did also run to a ton of design challenges along the way. And I'll give it back to Willie who will share some of them. Thanks, Emily. So as you just heard, we're coming out of April and we decided that we weren't going to launch the Fast Follow, but instead go back to the drawing board and completely make a refreshed V3 with all the features that we had wanted. Um, so we had a blank canvas and that quickly got filled up with a ton of ideas. And Rasmus was the main designer and he had a lot of pages, each one filled to the brim with mock-ups, massive pages. It was really amazing to see his work. But not only Rasmus worked on it, the entire team ended up chipping in with small ideas here and there. Non-designers, engineers like myself, or my engine manager, Kenrick, Joe stepped in. Marchin from Autolia V1 popped his head back in and added a few pages as well. And even designers from other teams like Catherine. Oh, also, Emily learned Flexbox <laughs> and contributed to this file and some of the design jams as well, which is pretty fun. And we had a lot of ideas. For example, what if auto layout was a first class feature that belonged at the top of the properties panel next to X and Y position, width and height? What if you could set auto layout properties right as drop downs from the width and the height? What if you could see previews for the layout properties as you're setting them to let you know what's sort of going on under the hood? For example, there's a panel on the right, like an advanced panel. It sort of might remind you of the advanced text panel that we brainstormed that could show a little preview at the top as you change alignment options. What if we had a simple mode and an advanced mode? Simple mode would have the most frequently used properties for new users to quickly grasp and understand and start using right away where the advanced panel or the advanced mode would have all the nitty gritty details and features that you could tweak if you're a power user and you wanted to customize it fully. Here's another sketch of this where we show what happens if you have a main panel with frequently used features and then a more involved advanced panel. And we got pretty crazy. We had some fun. We went pretty far. And here's just some screenshots that from all around that that made me laugh, but uh, jokes aside, there's a lot of small questions that we had to answer and we figured those out mainly along the way. But out of these, there were two big questions that stood out to us. The first of which is what to do with alignment and the second of which was sizing. And now I'll be talking about each of these in turn. First up, alignment. In auto layout version one, we had three alignment options left, center, and right. And when we added main axis stretch, that also meant we had to add main axis alignment, which is alignment in the other direction, top, center, and bottom. And we realized that there's actually another panel that has this called text. <laughs> you may be familiar with it. You can align text, the left, center, or right, top, center, or the bottom. So we riffed off of this. What happens if we put the icons into the auto layout panel? Now, they all sort of look similar, and it's getting a little cluttered and hard to read. So we added labels, but the labels didn't really seem to help. We tried some crazier things, like putting all the alignment options in a row or having a drop-down menu. But then we're struck by an idea. What if we could show all nine options at once? And this is what we call the nine grid. It shows all the alignment options and allows you to set them with one click. And the little previews inside each square sort of clue you in on what's going to happen before you click it. But it had a little bit of an issue. It's kind of busy and like hard to read and figure out if you're going quickly. So we pursued a more abstract version of this. We distilled each square down into a dot that you could click. And in some cases, it had an arrow. But the same premise was. The, the, well, the premise was the same. You could click in each grid cell and it would set the alignment. We put this in front of users actually, and we found that it was pretty confusing and hard to understand at first. But even though when you did get it, it sort of all made sense. If you clicked in the upper right, for example, it would align your items to the top and to the right. 
So we thought, how can we make this a little more clear, a little more understandable? So we played around with adding a preview side by side with the nine grid. And then we had another insight that what happens if we combine the nine grid and the preview into what? So we, we could show you an interactive preview, but also as you hovered over the different nine hidden segments of the nine grid, we could show you a hover state that showed what alignment that would be. And when you clicked, we were still able to set the alignment in one click. And we really like this. It made it all the way to the final design with one more tweak. We originally had the alignment in line in the properties panel, but then we found out through more user feedback that alignment wasn't actually that common. So we decided to give it its own button and pop over menu to keep the main panel clutter free. And this freed up the main auto layout panel to have the most commonly used items, such as direction, spacing, and padding. And so that's alignment. Next up, I'll be talking about resizing. In the V2 proposal, resizing was actually split up into two places. You could set hug in the main panel, but you could also set stretch on the top. Now, we decided to try to consolidate these two. In the end, there's only really three options that you could have. You could have your frame be fixed size, hug, or stretch. And you could do that in two axes, both width and height. And we thought the icons were a little bit confusing, so we played around with the menu. But then we ran into the issue of, what do we call the menu? Should we call it grow or shrink, auto, flex, fill? We had a lot of ideas coming here. And a few decisions helped guide the way to our final names here. First of all, grow and shrink could actually turn out to be misleading. There are cases where if you click on grow, you could actually have an item that got smaller. But if you clicked on shrink, it could actually get larger. Um, we also, in the case for auto, decided not to go with it because that was also ambiguous because both shrinking or hugging and stretching were both sort of automatic actions handled by the layout system. So we ended up going with hug contents, fix, and fill parent. Now, through more user feedback, we discovered that the resizing options are actually very important to understand the behavior of an auto layout frame. And it was actually fairly frequently used. So with that, we moved the size options out of the auto layout panel into its own separate panel called size, which then we called, ended up calling resizing. And we gave it a small visualization that might remind you of the constraints panel. And this similarity is not by coincidence. Both resizing and constraints are both ways to control layout, just that constraints apply to normal frames and resizing applies to auto layout frames. And depending on which world you're in, you, could, you would see two different panels. So I put this in front of users, and we actually discovered a blind spot. There's a specific case where if you have an auto layout frame inside a normal frame, both constraints and resizing apply to it. And this is confusing to have two panels that sort of look similar and also had similar effects on layout, but that were actually subtly different because they had to trying to bring together two different worlds. And users were confused. And we thought, you know, why don't we just combine the two into one panel? And so we did a quite literal visual combination of the two panels. You can see some variations on the bottom. And, and that was, we thought, that was the problem solved. But it turns out that under the hood, there's actually some more going on. The two panels actually have a pretty complex interrelationship between each other. And settings in one panel could actually affect the other panel. And so it, just, it wasn't just a problem of combining the two visually. We actually had to find a way to conceptually bring them together. Otherwise, we were stuck with the two panels. And this kept me up at night for a while, trying to figure out how to bring the two together. And we didn't really have an answer to this. And at some point, we thought we just had to ship the two panels side by side, that we just had to bite the bullet, and users could just figure out the complexity, and, and we'd move on. But then during a design jam session, we had a little bit of inspiration. Left in, we, we had an epiphany, and we realized that 
two of the constraints were actually unlike the others. Left and right and scale not only affects the position of an item, but also the size. And that made it directly exclusive to using how contents. You couldn't have them both at once. And with that in mind, we made a menu which had left, right, and scale and hug contents be different options so that you had to choose one. We also had a bunch of diagrams and thinking. And we, when we really fleshed this out with all the different possibilities, we realized that it was actually possible to bring the two panels together into one panel that could deliver the right options at the right time. And we call this the hybrid constraints and resizing panel. And we also are shifting this. This is a pretty close to the final design. Now, this panel can shift between constraints in a normal frame, resizing when you're in an auto layout frame. And if you happen to be in between, it'll show you just the right options so that you don't get yourself. It's pretty clever. And now, combining both the alignment and resizing, we get the new auto layout v3 panel. And we're really excited to bring this to you. On the left, you see auto layout version two, and on the right, v3. We've streamlined the main panel of auto layout, bringing direction, spacing, and padding right to the front. Alignment is tucked away in its own side panel with a beautiful and interactive alignment center. And constraints in resizing is now featured fully and prominently in its own dedicated panel that can shift between normal constraints and resizing in auto layout frames and everything in between that lets you get the right sizing option every time. And we're really excited for you to get hands on on this when we ship it later this year. And until then, I'll turn it over to Emily to talk about what we learned through the entire process. Thanks so much. So thank you, for Willie, for sharing all of that. And glad you guys were all able to experience the windy and flexy journey that we went on. And all of it made us realize that being flexible is actually a really important part of designing and building products. And specifically, here are some ways that we were flexible that you can apply to your design process as well. The first is to make sure to fill in your blind spots. And there are three ways that we did this. The first is we looked for internal feedback through design crits and open sharing in Slack channels. We kept a pulse on user needs through Twitter, the support team, and our sales team. And we validated solutions with users through both formal and informal user testing. And all of these things actually made us change the V3 scope and nudge us into the right uh, direction for all these minor and major design directions. Uh, for the next thing and final thing is to not be constrained by your role. And we had a couple of examples that we called out from Sawyer from another team jumping in to Willie contributing to designs working with Rasmus, uh, to me channeling my fifth grade self and memorizing Flexbox and more CSS values. But it's not just us. Uh, here's a couple of faces of people who worked on V1, V2, and V3, and even more. And all of these people stepped out of sight of their role to bring you auto layout, which will be launching by November. And so thank you so much. We're looking forward to hearing maybe how the rest of you are being flexible. Here are our handles. We can answer any questions there. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference.